Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the very last video of my Dominaria box openings that nobody cares about. And the very last patron, good old Chris G. Um, hope everyone's had a beautiful day. Sit back, relax. Let's do some rambling about the market conditions and um, let's just enjoy the very last Dominaria set box opening on this channel. Um, today's conversation and focal point is going to be around Brothers War. As we crack open the Dominaria here. And as we head off into the sunset on the end of the series. Well, we are a couple weeks away from Brothers War. I'd say maybe, I don't know, three weeks at this point is the filming of this video. And quite frankly, I am hoping it is a very major success. <laughs> Pack one, M10. Where's an M10 common? I'm hoping it's successful. I think it has the ingredients it needs to be successful. But... My biggest concern isn't really Brothers War. It's the print run and the management of Wizards of the Coast. And it's the sheer amount of anger towards Wizards of the Coast. Like, I think they have more anger than people who don't like me. Like, it is astronomically through the roof. People and the attitude towards magic since this Magic 30th anniversary, the $1,000 little box thing. and every, I mean, just it is just out of control off the chart. So, what does that mean? That means that nobody has any true understanding of how this product, Brothers War, is going to come out, how it's going to stabilize, how it's going to do, and there's no real way to, I don't know, say gamble or guess or speculate or try to figure out what's going to happen. Because it can, you know, with the decisions and things Wizards has going on right now, I mean, we can pretty much say, well, we know they're going to overprint it, we know stores are going to have to fire sell it. But at the same time, so I didn't even almost miss that little signature there. It's like a little, it's cool. At the same time, we also know there's going to be a point in time where Wizards pivots. We just don't know when that's going to be. Is it going to be Brothers War? Is it going to be the new Phyrexia set? Is it, hey, there you go, Mythic number one. We got our first card. And nice little uh, Phyrexian rare, too. Um, that's the problem, because when the change happens, it's going to shock the market. We don't know when and where that's going to take place. So it's, that's what makes it really risk. Wow, really? Karn, then a lily. Fantastic. Holy crap. Isn't that amazing? Every time I see a lily in standard, it's not a new lily. It's literally lily, the original, like the best lily. And I'm just like, that amazes me that nobody can. Eh, I'm going to on that. I cannot believe Liliana's in standard, and like just nobody cares. <laughs> it's so crazy, man. Oh my god, if this was any other year in the past, people would be losing their mind, and nobody cares at all. LeGroif, new version at all. And we've been getting a lot of Kamigawa pulls in our list slots in the last few videos. Anybody else notice that? Man, that's pretty well. But that, that's where it's at. See, that's, that's the risk right now, is we don't know when all of a sudden that supply is going to shift on us, and the market's going to firm up. And a lot of people are speculating that's going to be New Phyrexia. Um, some other people have speculated to me that it's going to be the set after New Phyrexia because of how long Wizards' lead time is to make changes on print. Oh my god, really? Wow. When's the last time you guys saw an Elspeth? I don't think this is one of the good Elspeths, though. Theros Beyond Death. I don't know if this is one of the five drop Elspeth. That may not be. Eh, I, I don't. I could be wrong. Maybe it could be a good one. I feel like the five drop Elspeth was not the, the strong sought after one though. Maybe I'm, I gotta check that one. I'm not really sure about that. Evolving. Beautiful Tolarian. But that, that's what I see going on here. You know, so as of right now, the market continues to just reject these high prices. And stores are just having a really hard time dealing with it because, well, Wizards raised the prices of, you know, collector boxes and, you know, draft boxes, but the market can't sell them for more. So, sure, Wizards is getting more... Hey, there you go. Phyrexian Worm, one of the best rares in the set. So, while the Wizards is getting more per box, the LGSs and anyone who's in the, in, in the actual ecosystem of Magic has just been annihilated. And, hey, there you go. Timeless Lotus, Mythic number three. So, on the surface, everyone's going, well, that's all Wizards cares about, Rudy. As long as they get their higher profit, it doesn't matter what you think of per box in the market. Well, that shows how disconnected you are. And that's really, really a bad take because if you really understand that, well, after the product comes out, if it collapses, not a single store orders a restock, which means distributors don't take any restock, which means then all the excess wave in restocks of standard sets and magic completely bottleneck, build up, and then 
we end up having Amazon dumps. So it's not, you can't just say, oh, well, Wizards cares about an initial release wave and they get their money and that's it. Well, no. I mean, what makes a set really profitable and successful is, oh, Alabaster, wow, really? Alabaster Dragon from Flippin' Portal, OG Portal. Dang, I haven't seen that card in ages. It's like, man, that artwork, man, that's a nostalgia throwback. But I'm serious, if you because you have to understand, what made a product like, what's a good example? Like Modern Horizons 1. You know what made Modern Horizons 1 so much money for Wizards is really the Wandering? Oh, it's an uncommon one, never mind. Is, yeah, well, Modern Horizons 1 was more expensive, but they were able to reprint it like five times. Commander Legends 1, a cheap regular draft box, but they were able to reprint it like five times and they made a fortune. They didn't have to do any more R&D, any more additional cost. And they were able to just reprint the same thing five times over two years and just milk it for money. And the market just wanted more with open arms. Ooh, Witherlight. There we go. Nice little uh, foil mythic little, uh, little bee collection. So just saying comments like, oh, Wizards gets their money at the beginning and everything's fine. You know, who cares if the market collapses after is just such a bad take, man, because... A, a lot of money and a lot of inventory and a lot of the financials internally with Hasbro and Watsi are important when it comes to restocks and the market holding on. Because, oh, wow, I just realized that's a foil. Wow, foil uh, Moreau there, too. You know, that's what I keep trying to explain is that, you know, you can't just say they got their money. Because without Wave 2, 3, 4 and everything collapsing, the, um, the reduction. Wow, really? Grandma? Okay. The amount of reduction... And just gross revenue. And I actually, I can take a step further for you all. Uh, I think when they're able to reprint sets two, three times, I think the second, third, fourth reprint of a product is probably substantially more profitable and higher profit margin than the original because, again, all they have to do is pay a startup cost on the printer and just get it going. They don't have to redesign, repay anything, re repay the artist, redesign the set, pay for new art. They don't have to do anything. Everything's in place. They just run it again. So, you know, quite frankly, it's in everyone's best interest to have a set do really well in the market. Just says, please give me more because stores make more money. The market holds and Wizards is able to have better margins. Like everybody wins, but they just, I don't know. You would just think they would understand that, you know. And now, like, okay, you want to pick on like Boulder's Gate? Okay, so how about Dominaria Draft Boxes or Boulder's Gate? Okay. So no one's taking any restocks or waves or anything. So what happens? Well, I can tell you that means essentially there. I mean, you can't have a reprint three, four, five. It, you, so because of that, how much revenue are they going to lose? You know, and wow, look at that. The old uh, Ixalan era. I think it's Rivals. I think it's a Rivals card. On the other. So that, that's why I keep trying to explain. You know, th this ecosystem is so complicated. But so many people just, they, they won't have a good logical conversation and really kind of dig into it and really connect the dots because people are just very emotional they're very abrasive very angry they get very volatile and it's very you can't really have a more in-depth conversation when someone you're trying to discuss things with becomes like that wow look at that folks holy crap gutter grime from og Innistrad. oh my god there's a little slimy ooze that you haven't seen in a long time man boy there's a throwback for you God, our OG Innistrad. How long ago was that? God, that was so long ago at this point. In light of day, Tempest one. Um, black creatures cannot attack or block. Oh, is this one? Of the, is this like a Crusade type card? Where because it's white or black, is that is is this like a banned social card? I have no idea. I don't even remember that card. I just anytime I see any card like that now, I just I'm like, uh oh, is this is this a dangerous card? <laughs> I know, right? Welcome to the future. Am I right, everybody? Welcome to the new era, post-2020, where everything is sensitive and everybody's scared. Everybody's canceled and you're, I don't know, you're supposed to be afraid or you're not allowed to do anything. I'm not really sure how the world is anymore. I'm an old guy. So, anyways. But yeah, that's, uh, so far, Chris, your box one was pretty normal. Box two is feeling kind of weak so far, everybody. Just kind of laying that out there. So, another lockdown. It's like, come on, can we get some good action for box two? Because I feel like we're just kind of, kind of just chugging along here. We're not really hitting anything major in box two. It's a little bit disappointing. All right, Ivy and nothing. Jeez, it's like it's like where's all the good cards? But I guess that's 
that's just kind of the luck of the draw in life, right? When you do box openings, you just, sometimes we get these amazing box openings. Other times it's just like, hey, Plaza, that's a nice little rare. And wow, new Phyrexia, throwback Paladin, huh? Pure Steel. That's a nice little surprise. God, the, the list slot is so big, you have no idea what you're going to get. It's so random. Holy crap. The pool of possibilities is just, it's so massive. There's just no way. Now, we, we have in the past had a few strange correlations, but overall, man, it's uh, quite, uh, quite a big uncertain batch of pools. Am I right? So anyways, folks, that's where we're at with everything. <laughs> wow, another portal card, Cloud Dragon. Isn't that weird? Like, we've got, we'll go, like, all the whole video series and get, like, no portal cards. And, like, we'll get multiple portal cards in the slot. Maybe it's a weird track printing. I don't know what's going on with that. All right. But anyways, I just, you know, it's a very complicated thing. And one of the things I always, that's one of the things I've always felt that was important with this YouTube channel was that, you know, we discuss things on the channel that a lot of people don't want to or they can't or they're uncomfortable to because it, it makes people upset. There's no way to discuss um, a lot of the topics we do on the channel. Wow, really? Throneville Drain Outlaws Merriment. Like, wasn't this like the worst mythic in Throne? Like, I don't understand that. Why do they choose a mythic like this from Throne to put in the list slot? Compared to all the cards that are possible in Throneville Drain, why do you choose that? Like, who, like, I, sometimes I just, there's certain things that never, ever make sense to me. Wizards make some of the most bizarre decisions. Maybe they just do it randomly sometimes just to confuse people, you know? So that there's no pattern to really throw people off. Hey, Shivan Devastator. There's a nice hit for you all. But, anyway, that, that's just one of the things I've always been kind of proud of on this channel is that we do kind of talk about and address some of these topics that are, oh, there's a nice little golden, um, that are really kind of, I don't want to say taboo, but aren't really discussed or aren't really kind of broken down in depth or, you know, a lot of people just kind of want to avoid it because, again, a lot of these topics, the Unifier, no matter what you talk about when it comes to print runs or the reserve list or secondary mark, like any of those type of uh, hot words, you're going to have people who are going to just hate your guts and they're going to get triggered re-crazy mode and other people who are going to just think that's the best thing ever. You're going to have very emotional responses and very dramatic swings of people. And that's, that's kind of one of the things like on this YouTube channel that we talk about all the time. There's a tremendous amount of people out there that think I am the worst thing. Like, I am, like, literally destroying the universe. Yeah. Because I sell boxes of cards in Pokemon and MetaZoo and Flesh and Blood and Weiss and Magic. And no matter what the video is, I could spin a wheel. And whatever it lands on... Wow, that's like our fourth hedge catcher today. No matter what we talk about, there are going to be people that are upset that I'm pumping and dumping the particular product on that particular day. No matter what it is. It could be anything. Anything. And, oh my god, look at that old, old school artwork, Dark Ritual, am I right? I think it's like a dual deck version too. But that's, you know, that is I think one of the side effects of maybe social media or YouTube or influencers or, you know, because a lot of people don't watch a ton of videos or a ton of channels, they just bounce around. So they're not maybe fully familiar with maybe all the products or how things work or how we just kind of always report everything. And, I don't know, people kind of derive their own conclusions, which many times are very, well aggressive and vulgar but that's i think that's just part of the new era we're in and i know a lot of people don't like social media a lot of people think it's ruined civilization which you know there are ways to argue for and against that but that's that is how it is folks i mean there's no way to act like this is not a real thing i mean you know we are in a time Rissy, cold eyes i remember i filmed the other video a few days ago we had the same cold snap rare but what's weird to me is the odds of pulling that one rare are so low. How do we get multiple back to back like that? Like that's just weird to me. That sometimes we ah, it's so weird, man. Squee. All right, folks. Last pack of the video. Uh, Chris, uh, not a bad video. Not bad. You didn't do amazing, but we didn't have a dumpster fire. I'm gonna call this a pretty average box. So it's like our fourth angel of rape. We, oh, in the end of the video, foil Shiv and Devastator. Wow, so we had a foil and an unfoil, right? Wow, that was a nice little surprise in the end. Uh, but final thoughts, everybody, as we uh, kind of set Dominaria into the sunset. Um, it's a tough time. It is a very challenging time. You know, I can pitch you guys a lot of positive things that are going to be happening in the world in 2023 with the CCG world. And there's a lot of things to be optimistic about. 
But at the same time, we have to be very blunt and honest about what has been happening, what is currently happening. And as of right now, like I said, we have record amounts off the chart of anger and hatred towards Wizards of the Coast. And, you know, the combination of, like, Brothers War having, you know, finally all these artifacts, Urshas, Mishra, this and that. And by the way, there's Transformers. And it, it just doesn't feel right. It feels off. And you know they're doing it because, well, we're going to lure in the new player base from the Transformer community. You know, and it just it, you can, it just feels very disconnected and disrespectful and all this and that to the enfranchised players. They just don't feel, they just feel like they're getting milked and they're upset about it. And I get that. And that makes sense, you know. Anytime anyone has a bad experience, you could open any bad, you could open a bad magic box and you it can make you hate Wizards for life because you got hosed. You could buy a, a Pokemon box, same thing. You could buy a, a Rudy 6.9 kit off eBay and have a bad one. You could hate me for life. You could buy a bad car at a dealership. It could be a lemon, and you could hate that brand for life. You know, but that's that is part of how humans, you know, develop perspectives, and that may develop you a bad perspective, or it may be very biased because your personal experience may not reflect the average larger sample size, and that happens in life. You know, so I do think we're going to pull out of this. I do think Wizards is going to pivot. And I do think moving in the next year, things will be just fine. And actually, we're going to start seeing upticks again. Uh, I do believe we continue to see absolutely no appreciation in anything because of how volatile and inflation and the economy, recession, this and that, negative. You know, it's just, you know, it is just a vacuum on capital in markets across the board. And everything has just been just clobbered. So, but, you know, I, I still remain optimistic that the, the basic principles are intact. You know, I, I believe that sealed product will still, you know, do its thing moving forward. Now, is it going to do as well as it used to do? Probably not. You know, are you going to be able to triple your, your money and double your money and seal the product in a couple of years? I don't see that happening anymore. But at the same time, saying that Dominaria collector boxes at, I don't know, $200 or 220 or whatever, 240 whatever it is now with shipping and tax, telling me that that's going to be the same price or lower in three years from now, I don't believe that. You know, it could be wrong. We'll find out in three years. But, you know, a situation like that, I have a hard time believing. And the odds of that happening are, I think, are a lot lower than the odds of a favorable future. And that's what I always look at. Because there's no, there's no equal sum game in life. It's not just zeros and ones. It's, it's, it's shades of gray and degrees of risk. And, you know, you can't just say, is it going to be worth more or less? Am I going to make or lose money? It comes down to... You know, how much it's going to go. Like, you can't say it 20 years from now when we're all old and Rudy's long gone. You know, a Dominaria box is going to be worth less than it is today in 20 years. I mean, it's it's not impossible, but it's highly improbable. The odds of something going up, and especially a sealed out of print product, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. The, more, the, the higher the quantity of years you place under the product, the higher you're tilting the teeter-totter where the odds are in your favor. That's the best way to say it. So nonetheless, I hope you guys learned something. This wraps up the end of the Dominaria box opening series. As always, folks, I appreciate the uh, the honor and privilege to entertain. Hope you guys learned something and uh, enjoy listening to different perspectives. And as always, have a great day.